Hi everyone and welcome back uh, to my channel Alchemy Needlework and um, today I am going to prep a kit for stitching. This is Illa Cross Stitch Touch of Magic Mystery Sal. It's going to start towards the end of May and I thought I'd get a move on and get the fabric sorted. Now it's a full kit, it came with the magnet which I've put in a safe place so I don't lose it. And I shall open this up to show you the content. If you're interested in joining the sale, I'll put the details down below. I haven't got any discount codes or anything, but I just thought I would show you how I prep my fabric and how I prepare to start cross stitching. And this will be the same regardless whether I'm doing a kit or kitted my own up. The process will be exactly the same. The only thing might differ is whether I grid, partially grid, or just centre cross. I'm thinking at the moment that I will partially grid. These are the silks. Oops, I see. I've started and I thought I'd, I'd film this. So these are the colours that we have got. Um, so they're, they're all that. There's plenty of black, so I imagine. There's going to be a lot of black in it. It is a Halloween thing after all. So we have got 16 colours. So that's nice to know. And that's all on there and that's all ready and set to go. The canvas I have chosen to work on, the canvas, fabric I've chosen to work on is the kit and I have chosen even weave. So this is what we've got. And the first thing I need to do when I prep my fabric is to seal the edges so it stops fraying. So the first thing I need to do is prepare the edges and stop it from fraying. So what I do is I get some just plain black cotton, cut a strip off, which I've done already here, and I just blanket stitch. For those that don't know, blanket stitch is a very good method of sealing your edges. You have got the choice of using a sewing machine and zigzagging or hemming, depending on what you do. Uh, you can use some acid-free tape to bind your edges. I don't like using tape because it leaves a sticky residue. And also, it's a pink and shears which I occasionally use um, to crop the edges. And which one have I done recently on that? Oh, my latest Hague. I did it on a Hague one. Uh, just to try it out. I've not. That's the first one I've pinked. So I thought I'd try that one out because that is going to be a long st stay stitch and I have got quite a bit of margin that I can retaliate and stitch if I need to. To do a blanket stitch, I go down two to four, four squares on here because quite often the fabric's not cut straight. Put my needle through the hole put my thread over the needle so my needle is going underneath it and pull and then you get this nice little edge. Now this is going to take me some time. Let me do some stitching. And I'll come back to you when I've finished stitching this and I'll tell you what I do next. I have finished salvaging the, uh, the ends. Uh, that just took me about an hour and a bit, if that. Bigger pieces take longer. I've got a piece of thread longer than my fabric and I am going to find the centre point. So I'm going to fold it 
in half and find the crease mark and uh, with my thread I am going to let's see if I can get this centered properly I am going to follow this down the spine of the fold uh, using a running stitch I'm not fussed about the gapping because I knew I used too long a piece of this is the thing if you use too long a piece it knots. If you use too short you end up with gather stitches so I'd rather go longer than shorter. So I'll just work my way across this. Oh it's gone all the way through. Let me just trim some of this off. I don't like securing it because then I can't pull it through. So here we go. In and we'll just going in and out of the gaps on the spine using a running stitch if you keep it on the spine you find that you won't deviate onto the next row so there's that so I'll just continue along in this vein it's not helping my short-sightedness and I'll just run along this and and I'll get back to you when I finished going down here and I'll do the the other direction and then hopefully we'll be prepared to stitch Exactly the same. Oops, just not the camera. And I will do exactly the same as I did before. I'll find the uppermost row and I'll just start stitching a running stitch. So now I have finished quartering my fabric and I have got my centre point which is here so I can start stitching but before I can do that I need to put my frame in so I'm going to get my quick snap I think this is a 10 8 inch or 10 inch 
it, it's small enough to hold in the hand. So I'm already now prepared to stitch and the pattern drops on the 23rd and all being well with this video will be going up on that date. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit demonstration video. If you do, can you give me a big thumbs up? Hit that subscribe button if you have not already subscribed to my channel and hit the notification bell and I'll see you in my next video and keep stitching. See you soon.